whisky.com where fine spirits meet. And today I'm on the west coast of the Scottish mainland, the Highlands, and we are near the Nacneen distillery. It is located on the Morven Peninsula, a very large peninsula with um, very few people, so it's very scarcely populated, a lot of nature, very nice place for such a rural distillery. And fun fact, the distillery is the first and only distillery that is 100% organic and run with 100% renewable energy. So really a really nice distillery. The name Nekneen is, um, comes from an old Gaelic goddess Nish Nirhain and she is the protector of nature and also the queen of the spirits, which is a very nice name for a distillery, really, really fitting. So the distillery was, um, the idea of the distillery came up in 2012. Annabelle and her parents who owned the estate um, had the idea of, yeah, creating a malt distillery. Annabelle then in 2013 quit her job in London and started the project. It took her four years and the distillery was opened in 2017, up and running and producing. And in 2020, the first whiskey was released. And now we're here to see how it is actually made and try some of the whiskey. To the right, you see the cooling pond, which is just a pond of rainwater that is used to um, cool the condensers. The water for the mashing, for making the whiskey, actually comes from a private spring. And interesting is that um, the Isle of Mull and around here is a volcanic area. There used to be lava here and now it's basalt rock. And that rock is perfect for filtering the whiskey. The water goes through that um, rock and is being filtered and becomes very soft and is yeah, really, really good for making whiskey. And the distillery has its own spring and has a really nice source of water that they can use then to make the whiskey. The other ingredient that is really, really important besides the water is the malt. And as I said, it's an organic distillery, so 100% organic malt. And it's 100% Scottish malt. It's from Aberdeenshire and from Fife. That's two regions where barley is grown. It's malted in Inverness and then shipped here. And yeah, they use one ton of malt ground down to a uh, coarse grist and mashed in. They have um, yeah, three waters where they dilute all the sugars out and all the starch and the starch is broken down by natural enzymes to then split up into sugars and that gives you then 5,000 liters of very, very sugary wort that is perfect for the distillation and for the fermentation of the whiskey. The fermentation is done in four wash bags are made of stainless steel and a capacity of 7,000 liters. They fill it up to 5,000 liters and they ferment in a yeah, different schedule. Their shortest fermentation is 65 hours, which is already pretty long. They call it short fermentations. The long ones are 120 hours, which is incredibly long. And this is exactly what they want to have. They want to have really nice, fruity character, a light and fruity character. So this is the first step to ensuring that this whiskey is made in a fruity and light character with a fermentation of a very long fermentation. Yeah, they also use two different kind of yeasts and they use that because a different yeasts produce different outcomes and yeah, they've seen that these two kind of yeasts give the, the, the result they actually want to have in the, in the right kind of flavor that they want to have. Yeah, so after the fermentation, it's then off into the stills. So now I'm in the center of the distillery, the still room. And behind me is the big wash still. Big, it's being filled with 5,000 liters of volume and everything is done by hand here. You don't actually have a computer here. It's just a booklet where you put in what you've done and they open all the valves by hand and turn everything by hand. So it's really um, old traditional style distilling business going on here. And the shape of the stills is both lamp shaped. So you have a constricting piece and with the spirit still that is being filled with 3,500 liters, it's very important because if you have a constricting piece, then you have reflux going on 
over, above the constriction. And the reflux um, gives you more copper contact with the still itself and also a better separation of alcohol because everything that is condensing at the still is then flowing back into the pot and then being distilled again. So reflux gives you a more lighter character. So with the fruity um, flavors from the fermentation and this kind of distillation, you get a lighter kind of style of whiskey. What we also do have is a very nice way um, of working with the water and the cooling. They have a closed system with their condensers. That means uh, they don't lose any water and they don't get in any new water. So they save 90% of their water, which is 70,000 liters of water a day. Quite a big number. And that's just very good because it has a, a less environmental impact. Yeah. There is more to the distillation, so let's go back to the spirit safe and I'll give you a bit more. So um, now I want to talk about the Nekneen Botanical Spirit. Um, what the distillery does is they actually take their new make spirit and make a botanical spirit out of that. Why do they actually call it botanical spirit and not gin? That's because the new make they have, it is very high distilled and just a nice new make. But if you want to make a gin, you have to have a neutral alcohol, kind of industrial alcohol. And that's what the people here at the distillery really didn't want. They had such a good product as of their new make, and they wanted to make that into a gin. And they couldn't call it gin because gin is neutral, so they call it a botanical spirit. It's really a better gin, <laughs> as they have nice aromas in their new make spirit. What they do is they take that spirit, put it in a spirit tank and ship it off to another distillery uh, near Campbelltown and they take the botanicals, put it in an aroma basket and then distill it a third time with the botanicals in the basket with also juniper, so yeah, similar to gin, and distill it a third time and that is then taking up these yeah, flavors from the botanicals and is then the Nekneen botanical spirit. Really, really nice thing. Unfortunately, yeah, they can't call it a gin because they're just taking too much care and quality of product and the gin is supposed to be a, yeah, some, some, some kind of industrial product, which is not what Nagneen is looking for. So yeah, that was it with the distillation. Let's have a look how the new make spirit is then put into the casks. The casks are being filled at the distillery and then a tractor is used to transport them up the hill into the warehouses. Uh, they are filling about 600 to 700 casks per year and yeah, that's quite a decent number for such a small distillery. And yeah, what they are filling is they're filling a lot of bourbon casks as cask number one, cask number two, three and four, the bourbon casks, but they have about uh, a variation about 50-50 with bourbon casks and STR wine casks. STR wine casks, they stand for shaved, toasted, recharred. And there are um, sherry casks in there, some Oloroso sherry casks, some other sherry casks, and even some experimental casks. So most of the casks are going into their normal bottling that we already know, but uh, some of the casks are being stored for longer and some special bottlings are coming out and even some older bottlings will be maybe going to see a 10 year old in some time, but yeah, that's still a long wait until we will see that. Okay, and um, yeah, let's talk about how the area, how the region is affecting the whiskey. We have the whiskey, uh, the distillery located at the very, very west of the um, Great Britain. It's the most west mart, mart distillery in Scotland. And here it is a very coastal climate. It's very wet, a lot of rain, and the winters are not that cold. Five degrees Celsius is the lowest point and 25 degrees Celsius in summer is pretty much the highest point. So not that big of a difference as in countries like Kentucky or um, India or something like that. So we have a very yeah, slow maturation as scotch is yeah, traditional. Yeah. After that, the casks are actually emptied here on site and then actually filled on site into the bottle as well. So pretty much everything is done here on site. Yeah, I think I've 
said enough. This is how the whiskey is made and let's now try that whiskey actually. So, das war's mit der Produktion und jetzt gibt's noch ein kleines Interview. I'm sitting here with Annabelle Thomas, you're the CEO and founder of the distillery. So, yeah, thank you very much for having us here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, well, lovely place and lovely weather even. Well, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> mostly. Yeah, that's the Scottish okay. weather, you just wait 10 minutes and it's different. <laughs> Okay, so uh, very nice, you're a young distillery and we already have uh, four bottles in front of us. Um, cool, so, so what are we having today? Uh, well, we're going to start with the near organic, mm -hmm. which is our kind of classic recipe. Mm -hmm. um, this we released two years ago and it is um, a combination of three cast types, mm -hmm. STR, bourbon in roughly equal quantities and just a little smattering of sherry. Mm -hmm. So should we dig oh, yeah, in? Sure. Um, it is it's light and fruity and that's <laughs> what we were always going for. I wanted to create something that was deliciously drinkable um, and in my, my view that starts with the new mixed spirit so that's what we try to do is create a light and fruity. Yeah we've seen that with the, the formal distills and fermentation time and everything that, that's really nice. More question for, for that uh, bottling, how, how different are the batches would you say? Um, well, we have just moved to a new batch code mm -hmm. and the difference between the previous batches which were numeric mm -hmm. and the new batches which have a four letter number code is different. The recipe is different. We've changed the cast mix. Mm -hmm. But aside from that change, the batches should now be consistent. Ah, uh, so... To the extent you can. So what batches. we have is right now, I think we have the 15 and the 17. Yeah. And uh, BU08 is after 1517. Ah, I thought this one was Oh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> this is the breaking news. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I didn't have the, the BU06 in the end yet. Exactly. <laughs> so this is a new one. So that we, we're a young distillery, as you said, <laughs> and our casks constantly evolve. <laughs> um, the sherry casks that we have are 500 litre sherry butts, <laughs> and so obviously they mature a lot more slowly than our other casks. So they weren't ready to be incorporated when we first started production, mm -hmm. and they now are. The bourbons have also moved on, so it's just a subtle evolution of the recipe. So a bit more bourbon, a mm -hmm. bit less STR, and the addition of a little bit of sherry. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Ooh. Oh, yeah, fresh, fruity, but also from my point of view, a little bit uh, floral. Mm. Mm -hmm but different to what I have remembered the the, uh, the old one in the back yeah. then. But the thing is, if you have a whiskey out of the story, it just tastes different. Oh, it always tastes better, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Something about being out of the story. Yeah. But it is, I mean, it is different, but I think I would describe it as an evolution, not a revolution. Mm -hmm. So it's still got the main characteristics that we were going mm -hmm. for. It's just, you know, the next step in the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely. Um, and for such a young whiskey, it's, it's pretty mature, I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, those three cast types all bring different mm -hmm. elements to the, to the party, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's always nice to have more cast, so you just have, you have the complexity in there. And yeah, it's just, exactly. That's just cool. I like it, very round. Oh, but now here comes the intensity. Mm. Oh, it's building up. Mm. I like it. It has a lot of fruit in it. Mm. It does, and a lot of mouthfeel. It's a bit of a technical yeah. term, but like the oiliness. Mm. Oiliness, which yeah. We think comes from the organic barley. Mm. Because there's so much more in every grain of organic barley, mm -hmm. it gives that kind of texture, if you like, to mm -hmm. the mm. Mm. Oh, I like it. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. How much ABV? 46. 46. Yeah, so just non chill filtered, mm -hmm. natural color. Mm -hmm. 46. Mm -hmm. I like it that you, you use STR cast, you can really feel that they have a bit more depth to it. There's a bit yes. more of a oh, great nose, a bit more darker nose in there. Exactly. I think so. it balances out the lightness mm -hmm. of the spirit and some of the floral, fruity notes. It brings kind of spice and Mm -hmm. They're great. Yeah, nice. So, um, use of organic barley, and I've 
hinted a little bit about the environmentalism and renewability. Can you give us a little bit of a recap because I totally did not cover everything of that. So how did you come up with the idea and, and why environmentalism? Um, so I guess I wanted to create a distillery with a focus on sustainability because mm -hmm. I felt like that was missing a little bit in the industry. Mm -hmm. The industry has this amazing tradition which I think is really important mm -hmm. but I think it's also important that there are maybe new distilleries in the industry that are a bit more forward looking mm -hmm. and think about what's coming next and I think a big part of that for younger consumers is sustainability and it wasn't mm -hmm. me and I'm, when I started thinking about setting it up in 2012 nobody in the industry was really talking about sustainability. Mm -hmm. Very few. <laughs> very, very few. Very few. <laughs> so um, and of course, when you're starting a distillery from scratch, you have the luxury of being able mm -hmm. to define how you're going to do everything at the beginning, which mm -hmm. is, of course, enormously helpful. Um, and that's what we did. So I tried to pick off initially the big issues that we need to fix up from, which is energy, water, waste, mm -hmm. and barley. Mm -hmm. So we made the right decisions, I hope, back then on those big elements. Mm -hmm. And then everything else has been a kind of evolution as we go. For example, packaging. We mm -hmm. haven't decided what that was going to be back in 2015, but yeah, sure. you know, can you figure out when you get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so, do you have a biomass plant on site? How does that work? Uh, well, initially, mm -hmm. with difficulty, it's not the simplest way to power okay. a, a, a distillery. Um, but we decided to do that because we have commercial forest right here. It's okay. literally a mile down the road. Mm -hmm. And I think with sustainability, it's always about getting the right answer for where mm -hmm. the company is. There's no point in getting a biomass border if there's no trees, but we have this on site. And as you discovered coming here, we're a long way from everything else. Yeah, so we use what we have here. Yeah, yeah true. Um, so we harvest wood, it dries in the forest for a year, we chip it ourselves, our distillers are also wood chippers. Mm -hmm. They bring it down from the forest, they tip it in and the biomass boiler heats our stills. Oh. And in fact the brewer is sitting in, so the radiators are powered by waste heat from the boiler as well. Ah, oh, okay, so, not, so it's, it's kind of biomass as in uh, trees and... Trees, and, okay. exactly. Yeah, there are a lot of trees around here. <laughs> there are a lot of trees around here. We don't cut down the native ones, it's just the kind of conifers that are grown to be harvested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that is, that is really nice. I think uh, maybe you were part of it. Uh, I think the environmental part in the, in the business is kicking off. Yeah. Um, you were probably in the lead there. Yeah, Yeah, a little bit of luck and a little bit of foresight. <laughs> it goes yeah. a long way. Okay, so the next one is one of your Quiet Le uh, Rebels Exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, so Quiet Rebels is kind of the homage to your employees here. Correct. So we release this every autumn mm -hmm. uh, and we they're all named after one of our team in the order that the team joined the company. Ah, okay. Uh, so Lorna was our first ever mm -hmm. employee. She joined just before we started or as we started building the distillery. Mm -hmm. So she, in an absolutely heroic way, helped Cater for all the builders that actually build the <laughs> and now she's one of our distillers. Okay. Um, so she has a very sweet tooth, and the idea of Quiet Rebels is that they're, the whiskies are designed around the tastes of that person. Oh, okay, so. So Matt, who's our blender, sits down with them, tastes lots of different whiskies, and tries to get to the heart of what they like in whiskey, mm -hmm. and then create something as close to that as we can from the stock in our warehouse. Yeah, the yeah, employees around here is, uh, is a big topic as well because uh, it's pretty hard, probably, to get the people, isn't it? It is and it isn't. I think um, it's hard to house them. <laughs> it's actually, you know, one of the biggest issues. We do, you know, it is such a beautiful part of the country and whilst the winters are not great, the summer is amazing and actually mm -hmm. post-Covid I think people have really got the idea of being out of cities and things. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean it's not like recruiting in London. But. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> the thing is, you have to like nature if you want to be around exactly. somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a mixture of <laughs> ex bourbon and ex Pinot de Charente casks. Pinot de Charente. So it's good. a French sweet wine. A sweet wine. Okay. Yeah. So sweet wine as in strong wine or fortified? It is fortified. It yes. is fortified yeah. wine. Okay. Um, so this French answer to sherry then. Something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's, it feels very sweet. Yeah, it's got a lovely sweet nose, mm -hmm. I think. And uh, a nice bourbon character touch to it. Yeah. That just comes up very nicely at the beginning. 
So even the Pinot de Chaux were in Bourbon for the first few mm -hmm. years of their life as a Pinot de Chaux finished, yeah. But I think I also got a little bit of the distillery character, the freshness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in some ways the freshness comes through more when you're using Bourbon cast because mm -hmm. there's less. Mm -hmm. Mm. I've eaten that a little bit mm -hmm. differently. Mm. It comes on a little bit lighter at the beginning, and then there come, it kicks in a little bit of a spiciness. Mm. Something, yeah. Is it is it European oak then? Because it has a bit of a touch to that. Not much. But well, the Pinot de Chiron probably is, but actually. Most of it is American oak. Mm. I mean, as in most of it's bourbon. It's, I can't remember the exact cast proportions, mm. but it's probably mm. through the Pinot de Chiron and ten mm. bourbon or something. But yeah, well, it gives a, um, a nice, a nice touch to it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it gives it some body, I think. Mm. So there has a bit of a been a bit of a discussion about the name, and the name is is Nagnin, or how do you say Nagnin? Yeah, Nagnin. Nagnin, and uh, the, the the full name is then. Nishna Hain. It's very impressive. <laughs> very impressive. And I do like the story. So, how did you come up with the story? Did you read it in a book, or was it a ch child's tale for you? No, it was. Um, <laughs> we researched kind of ancient Gallic goddesses and found Nishna Hain among okay. the archives, as it were. Um, <laughs> we wanted something. I didn't want to do the traditional thing and call the distillery the name of the place because okay. that's why everybody else does. <laughs> so we wanted something that represented more like our philosophy than just <laughs> the place we were in. Okay. Um, and we found the Shneohain and she's described as this protector of nature and okay. as a goddess who was kind of famous for walking around past. She'd like go and live in the woods on her own and okay. didn't really care what anyone else thought. And we thought, well, that perfectly sums up who we are, so we'll use that. But obviously the Shneohain is a rather long complicated words so we had to condense it down a bit. Is, it, is Nishnehang, is that like the official uh, acronym for, for uh, Nagnin, the official acronym for Nishnehang? No, or is that no, no, for you? Up. we made it up. So we just looked at Nishnehang and thought we can't possibly. I thought I can't type that 30 times a day. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is quite difficult. I have yeah, to it's hard say. to say and it's, it's 13 say. letters long. Anyway, yeah. anyway so no, we, we <coughs> took inspiration from that and called mm -hmm. ourselves Nagnin. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's, uh, I like it. it's, it's really, really nice and yeah, it captures what, what you are representing very, very good. Exactly. Um, yeah. Ah, nice. So the next one is then the Huntress. Yes. So this is our spring seasonal release and we're trying Huntress 2022 mm -hmm. today, so from this year. Um, this is more about the experimental side of our distillery. Mm -hmm. um, so as well as sustainability, we really like playing around with different flavour profiles mm -hmm. and in particular different yeasts. Mm -hmm. So for our normal whiskey, we always use two yeasts anyway in the distillate, mm -hmm. but for four to six weeks a year, we run these yeast trials where we try to think about creating different flavours in the spirit just by changing the yeast. Oh, okay. um, and this is the first one that we've released. Um, and it was made using, alongside our two normal yeast, we added in some rum yeast. Rum yeast? And it's just oh. really, it, so this is, the cast proportions are exactly the same as the organic, and so it's just interesting to try the two side by side. Um, but rum yeast, as in, how did you get, uh, I've, I've heard about the rum, the pits and the yeast living there. And, okay, oh, it's, oh. It's, it's true. So a lot of rum distilleries use natural yeast, yeah, you know, exactly. it's in the tanks or the air already, <laughs> but there are yeasts out there that were designed for rum production ah, that okay. are not the kind of naturally occurring ones. That was they originated from the okay. naturally occurring ones, but they're now produced. But you didn't go in one of these no, pits. No, no, that would have been fun. That would be a great trip, work trip, but we didn't. No. Um, I, I would like to do that one time, but maybe maybe get some protective gear. Exactly. <laughs> no, it wasn't that exciting. <laughs> Okay, so it's a, a rum yeast that... It's a rum yeast that we added and I just think my perspective coming into the industry with not very much background in whiskey <laughs> was, you know, I drink a lot of beer and brewers love yeast because <laughs> that's what creates flavour. Not the only thing, but it's an important component of it. <laughs> and ultimately, whiskey is distilled beer <laughs> and I couldn't understand why so few people in the industry cared about what yeast 
was being used. So <laughs> we've been running these experiments and Huntress is our chance to show them off to the world, even if it's a bit <laughs> geeky. Yeah, the thing with, with, uh, with you and other distilleries is probably that you don't have a very old tradition that you that you are about to destroy, so you have yeah. more possibilities. That's that's a bit of a yeah upside there. I agree, <laughs> definitely. It's a it's a big bonus that we can be a bit more have a bit more freedom. Um, so the spirit that this was made from had lots of those tropical fruit notes. Um, I think in maturation, it is got a li little bit, those tropical notes have softened a little bit and you get also some lovely sort of minerality. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we think. Oh yeah, now that I heat it a little bit up now it comes. I, I think it's it's lovely, it, it smells quite quite brown and smooth with a bit of a bourbon character to it. And yeah, the freshness from, mm. uh, and fruitiness from the distillery. And yeah, I think this one is even with the tropical fruitiness, I would say the most one. The other one's handsome, but this one is a bit more. Hmm. Mm. This one is really smooth. Is it also 46? For basically, these are 48 and a half. 48 and a half, mm. really? Oh, less. Mm. 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 It's pretty smooth and a mm. bit oily, not, mm. not that much, but it's freshness also. And uh, the like mango taste or something, maybe the smoothness reminds me of mango. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay, so we talked a bit about tradition and. Yeah. Um, I've actually done my uh, uh, thesis about a business plan, how to do a distillery. You've actually done it. <laughs> so, so how's the experience of doing it, uh, creating a distillery? Um, well, long, <laughs> expensive, <laughs> um, stressful and fun, I think would be a good way to summarize it. Um, yeah, so I used to be a consultant and as a consultant I wrote plans and other people had to make those plans happen. Mm -hmm. For me, writing a business plan and then having to do it myself <laughs> was quite a different experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the hardest part of the whole thing was raising money because you never know at that point if you're going to make it. You just until you've got the cash, mm -hmm. you can't get started. Yeah, you sure. feel like you could be wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Building the distillery was not fun either. Building projects never are, especially when they're complicated and in this remote location. Yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. But since we've been making it, making spirit, even before we had whiskey, it's amazing to actually see mm -hmm. the product that you've dreamed of come, you know, come really to life. And now, obviously, to have it in a bottle is pretty amazing. So, mm -hmm. um, definitely a roller coaster. Bar, <laughs> yeah, for me, it would probably be a bit different because I, I really don't like the the side of the finance and stuff. That's really not my thing. I've, yeah. I've done an MBA, but it's really yeah. not my thing. I'm, I'm actually an engineer, so the, okay. the whole the whole building would have been probably pretty fun for me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, whereas I was like, no, can't wait to get this over and done. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the equipment, to get the equipment was pretty pretty hard because uh, they all pretty much booked out, aren't they? Well, that was actually okay. We were very lucky that we were the first distillery to use a company called LH Stainless. Mm. And they did the whole distillery, which was the first one where they'd done the whole thing, you know, from milling all the way mm, through okay. to the stills. And they were fabulous to work with. It was mm. it at the point where four sites were completely booked out, but we were very lucky to meet LH at the right time in their development. So that bit was actually okay. Honestly, the worst bit was trying to do a complex building project here. Because it's yes. so far. Like, <laughs> forget one thing or one thing goes wrong, it's like two days to fix it. Mm, yeah. And everything stops for two days while they go get the things fixed in. Yeah, that's probably pretty pretty hard because it's a, how, how far is then Glasgow by truck? Yeah, like four hours. <laughs> four hours and truck, just, okay. I mean, you can get to Fort William in two hours, but still, they might not have it. Um, <laughs> and even, even trying to get the biomass boiler down the very narrow road, it's massive. It's two containers, it's really heavy, and we had to get a crane also down the road that could, was big enough to lift the boiler off the truck. And oh, okay, yeah, that is, 
That's amazing. I, I would have thought that is the, the the small pier down there is really not in mm. use. N- not, not for that sort of oh. maneuvering. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a I'm few not. passenger boats, but that's I think the big. That's, that's the end of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's all the road. Yeah, maybe okay. one day we'll bring things in by sea, but in the yeah, it's not there yet. <laughs> okay. So, but what I really love is I've already had the the botanical spirit, and I love the story behind that that you actually do a, a kind of a gin yeah. with a malt spirit. Exactly. I do love that. Yeah. Should we try it with yeah. some tonic? Was that the yeah? Let's let's try it. So, was that um, there before the organic, or which one was the first? No, this was the first. This was um, the first. We, back in about 2012, we considered doing a gym, mm-hmm. and I've actually got the original drawings, and then we scratched it out and thought, no, this, there's no point doing a gym, we have nothing to say about it. So there was no gin or this in the business plan, it was just three years and then we released the whiskey, was mm-hmm. the plan. But we, because we put a lot of effort into our new make, mm-hmm. because we want it to be super delicious, we started having people say, oh my goodness, your new make spirit is so delicious. Why mm-hmm. don't we bottle it? And I thought, mm, I didn't think it was a big market for just plain new make. But I'd been out foraging around here and there was, you know, there were lots of, um, there was lots of amazing plants that grow. So we thought, well, why don't we try and put the ginger can? Mm-hmm. The silver new make with the botanicals. It ended up much closer to a gin than I'd originally envisaged because we ended up adding juniper and coriander to make the whole thing balance. Mm-hmm. Um, but legally, it is not a gin because it starts as new spirit. Yeah, I think you're not distilling high enough for, for, okay. for the gin, which I find really disappointing because gin is then reduced to a product that is just industrial. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, I agree. Whereas in reality, this is more of a kind of old style product yeah, that probably wouldn't have had a particular yeah. name, but... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's... It's, this is this is not a gin as it's not industrial. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> but in the end, it's it's not about what's written on the bottle; it's what inside the glass. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so it you can use it like you would a gin. You can put mm-hmm. it in a Negroni. You can put it with tonic. Mm-hmm. Um, you can drink it on its own. It's delicious, and you can really. We've tried to create something that has the balance between the botanicals and the malt spirit. Okay, um, one question for that, is, uh, is it like harvested here or uh, how do you... So we have 10 botanicals in there, mm-hmm. four of which grow around here, mm-hmm. most of which we harvest around here, and in particular the bog myrtle, which is this plant mm-hmm. on the back and it's also on the front, mm-hmm. is the third biggest botanical in there and all of it is hand harvested around here by the team because you cannot buy it. Oh, okay. Um, but then the juniper and the coriander, we don't we don't have really enough around here to really have mm-hmm. So is that like, um, is it like keepable or is it doesn't go off? Or no. Or you, you, well, the bog might be. Yeah. Do you, do you have to dry it then? Or we dry it. You dry it. Luckily we have some very hot stills oh, yeah. <laughs> under which we can dry it. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's we just dry it under the stills. Yeah. 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 And then we, we have about four months of the year when we can harvest it. We dry it enough for the next year's production. And okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So. Um, cheers. cheers. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, I like it that you have. It's much more round. When you have a gin, you, you really realize it, it's round because you have such a fine distillation. Here you have a bit of a maltiness to it, a bit of a. It reminds of whiskey, and then you're like, ah, oh, that's no, not, it's not whiskey. Yeah, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> exactly. We wanted both both of those components to pe- play an equal role, if you. Hmm. Hmm. But I have to say, um, I tried this neat and in a gin tonic. Mm. Well, in a tonic. Yeah. And um, I did like it uh, neat a lot. I would yeah. say. I'm not quite sure. I don't. I wouldn't want to say waste because people have different tastes in it. But I think a neat is is really good. I agree, mm-hmm. and I think if you're used to drinking spirits neat, as most whiskey drinkers are, it's delicious on mm-hmm. its own or or in a cocktail. I think what I like about it is that even if you don't drink whiskey, 
Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting sort of introduction to the category because you mm -hmm. like gin and it's an easy evolution from gin. So. Yes, I've seen that many of our whiskey customers, they, they tend to go with the gin that the distillery has because it, it has more connection to it and exactly. the, yeah, the distilleries know what the, the people actually do like. Exactly. And I think that's, that's connected to your spirit as well, to your, to your whiskey. Yeah, mm. exactly. And it's a bit fun and it's different. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I do like it. So it was there beforehand. So It was there beforehand, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we released it in, I think, late 2018. 2018, um, so 17 year old until one year 17 later. 17 results distilling, distilling late 2018 mm -hmm. that came out in 2020. Mm -hmm. Our first whiskey. Yeah, it's not that, that long ago, yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I think we had a good overview now. Um, I'm really excited about what's coming next. I'm really hoping that you kick off because of it's it's great great stuff thank you very much yeah and thank you for having us here it was a great pleasure to seeing everything showing everything thanks for coming thanks yeah. for making the effort to come all this way it's not exactly an easy journey so. <laughs> yeah, it's not, but, but it's a lovely journey so you can visit the distillery you can yeah. So, but you have to book one or something. Just make sure you book in advance. Exactly. So, just go we on the website and. Go on the website, there's an online booking system. And. Off you go. Monday to Friday only, unfortunately. Have a look how you travel here. <laughs> exactly. We need plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah, that was it. Thank you very much for watching this video. And, yeah, if you have any friends who might be interested in Nakanin Distillery, then please feel free to share this video with your friends. And thank you, and see you next time. Thank you.